Mark, welcome to the show of the next truth where science and myth meet. Let me jump right into it all. The earth being flat. For our listeners and my own view, how do we have to see this? I mean, are we living on a piece of rock with a smooth surface that by, for instance, a strong force such as a collision has come loose from a huge planet uh, and is now free floating through the universe? Or do we live in an artificially cordoned off area? There you go. Yeah, the, the, the second one. You are living in a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling and like a planetarium, a terrarium, a snow globe, a Hollywood soundstage. And it was so big and so well designed that even our best and brightest didn't figure it out until almost 1960. And when they did, they decided to keep it a secret for as long as they could. We had nothing to do with the building of this place. It was built by someone else. Uh, I'll use a movie from, you know, a line from Contact with Jodie Foster, where she was asking, it's like, oh, did you build this? And she, he goes, we didn't build it. We don't know who did. And that was very humbling, I thought, a very honest approach to it, which is, look, you know, the, the universe, mainstream science is the universe is this massive, amazing thing with, and we're this tiny little rock covered with water and smoke, which is flying through it in multiple directions. And that we're a complete accident and we have no purpose. And we say the opposite. We say, no, you're in a building. It was built for you. You have a definite purpose. What that is, I'm not exactly sure yet, but uh, we'll get you one step closer to the ultimate question, which is why we are here. But is, where is your, or the flat earth theory based on which, and, and probably this, you have heard uh, this question, you have heard probably millions of times. Yeah. On which evidence ah. is this based? Got it. Can I, yeah, can I, I, I've got a, I've got some wonderful things that will point towards a flat earth. Can I prove to you 100% that the world is flat right now? No. If I did, I'd be on the cover of every magazine ever and the whole, everything would change. However, can I create so much reasonable doubt in the globe that the only place you have left to turn is a flat earth model? Yeah, I can do that all day long. And you're saying, well, that's not enough. It's like, well, I mean, might not be enough for an astrophysicist, but for the masses, it absolutely is. Reasonable doubt, at least over here in the United States, is part of our legal system. And all you have to do every hour, every day is create reasonable doubt and you will win over a jury. And so the evidence we could, I could go into my five bullet points, my, you know, my best, my best arguments, but I suppose that's later in the, in the questions. But if you want them now, I can totally no, give them to you. Just, just point them out. It's, okay. Okay, so I'll, I'll give you a quick little story. Um, there was a German television team from and I and I don't know all the networks called um, ZF1, I I, mm -hmm. I guess. And they contacted me and they said we have a physicist out in Georgetown University, which is out in the Washington D.C., who wants to debate you about this. And so give us your five best scientific points. You know your best science science mm -hmm. points. We will record you on video and we will send it to him and he will record a response. That way you guys aren't talking over each other. You guys will never talk to each other directly because we know that, that, that physicists and flat earthers really don't get along very well for obvious reasons. And so they go, you go first. And I go, okay, my five best, best arguments. Um, first one would be long distance photography. Far and away, the, the easiest one to do, the most common one that's out there, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos of people doing long distance photography saying, what does that mean? Before HD, if you had a boat that went off to the horizon, it was gone, right? It would go off. We all know it goes over the curve. It goes off into the distance. And if you, mm -hmm. you didn't matter how expensive a VHS camera you had, the resolution was just terrible. You'd never be able to see that boat again. Well, fast forward to about 2010 and HD technology and HD cameras made it very, very possible to where you could zoom. The boat was gone and then you could zoom in and the boat was there again. And then you could let it go out again. You could just keep cranking up the zoom. And the only thing, the only limit on that was the thickness of the atmosphere itself. Because you know, the atmosphere gets blurry and blurry over time because we're not breathing in nothing. 
you know, it's it's nitrogen mostly and, and some oxygen and a couple of trace gases. So that, that was number one. Uh, why why can you see things way farther than you should be able to? Uh, number two would be gravity versus the vacuum of space. Probably my favorite, which is what's stronger, gravity or a vacuum? And you could use an, a simple example of how you can use a straw to suck soda out of a glass or a larger example. Like it, you could take the second floor, the, right above you, you could turn it into a vacuum chamber and with a valve and you could pull that valve and what happens? Well, it's not like the movies. It's instant, it's violent, it's very undramatic. It's, it's, it'll equalize like that. It's just straight up thermodynamics. Pressure will equalize. And the question is, why didn't the gravity in your room keep the air in your room? Why did it go up? Well, because the vacuum was stronger. Always is. And the follow-up to that is like, okay, when you go outside, how is the atmosphere still here? Because supposedly outside of this world is one giant vacuum chamber. And not just giant, humongous vacuum chamber. And I've literally had, I mean, I had a guy, he stopped short, but he, he was going down the road of, well, because there's more gravity outside i go no it's the same gravity that was in your house so anyway that that's the second one we i could go off on a whole may, what may i interrupt you for a yes. second what do you mean with gravity what is gravity from your point of view what is oh, good good follow-up uh gravity from our point of view is basically the same as mainstream science mainstream science will any scientist will tell you it's like they don't know what gravity is they can only tell you what it does. Uh, they can only tell you the symptoms of gravity. You drop something, it falls to the ground. It's some magical molecular force that supposedly pulls everything down to the center of the Earth. Well, for flat earthers, it's a magical molecular force that just pulls things straight down. It's really just a question of angles. Uh, scientists will say, well, it's, it's pulling towards the, the core of the Earth. And it's like, oh, you mean the core that you've never, ever, ever seen and never going to see? And we say, well, it just pulls it straight down. It's just part of a physics engine. Um, number three would be the eclipse shadow, which is the eclipse shadow is too small. Uh, the moon, mainstream science says the moon is 2000 miles wide and yet the blackout zone, I don't know if you guys get eclipses over in Europe like we do, the blackout zone is only 70 miles wide. Okay. Well, that's a 90 something percent decrease in shadows. And it's like, well, it convexes it like a lens. It turns it into this little point compared to this 2000 mile object. It's like, wow. That works out for you, but we're saying that the moon is only about 50 miles wide anyway. So, I mean, down here on the ground, you can't make shadows smaller. Shadows are always either actual size or longer, hence long shadows. And no one, no one can explain it. Plus, uh, if when the Earth is in front of the sun, then why don't we have a blackout zone that's 250, about four times wider, 250 miles wide on the moon? Why don't we see the moon turn into a giant eyeball? We don't. We never, it's, it's the exact opposite. We either see these massive crescents or we see it turn into a blood moon. It's like, all right, can't have it you both. You mean can't... something like when I look into uh, the night sky, um, yes. I see, uh, well, uh, um, uh, not a circle from the moon, but a, a little bit, well, something has bit something out of the moon. Right. How, a, how does that, how does that a, happen a in the flat world? <laughs> The, the, the answer I, I give to people is like, look, it's not it's something that can be replicated all day long. Um, I don't know if you have planetariums where you are or nearby, but when you go into a, <clears throat> when you go into a planetarium, you know, those things have been around since what, the 70s, you go to a planetarium and you look up and, and you see the moon and they can do half moons and crescent moons and waxing and waning, blah, blah, blah. It's like, OK, do you do you see the moon up there? Yeah. Does it look spherical? Yeah. Can you land on it? No. Why not? Well, because it's just an image on the ceiling. I go, okay, that's my point. My point is when you walk out of the planetarium, who's to say you're not in just one big planetarium? In a planetarium, we can do just about anything we want with the exception of sunlight. And honestly, if, given the technology we have now, we actually could do sunlight. Um, anyway, um, number four would be the, uh, it was a weird one, but it came to me in, in 2016, somebody brought it to me, which is the moon temperature. Moonlight is cold. I'm going, and, and I probably had the same reaction as everybody else when I heard that. It's like, well, you mean it's colder at night? It's like, no, it's colder in the moonlight. And it's like, okay. But you, you, you mentioned moonlight. I'm sorry for playing the devil's advocate. No, no, go ahead. But you say moonlight. Right. There is no light coming from the moon. It's just a reflection of the sunlight. <laughs> on the moon. That's yeah, that's what mainstream science says. However, 
Like, if, this, if, this is what I have always been taught in school. Everybody has. From, yeah, yeah, so, everybody has. Uh, the, you, the, the problem you, is is that the reflected moonlight. How do you explain? How, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so if hard, I'll, I'll give you. Constantly, but how do you explain that that you are saying from the moonlight? There is how. They, they, okay. Please explain. I, I will explain. This, this, this. So the sun, let's say, and I, I'm not going to convert it to Celsius for you, but because um, you guys know some Fahrenheit. So let's say it's 80 degrees in the sun and 70 degrees in the shade. Why? Because whatever object is blocking some of the radiation, right? It's always cooler in the shade. Okay. Yes, there are relativistics. What we didn't know, and science will not address this, is that it's actually the opposite in moonlight the opposite meaning if it's 50 degrees in the moonlight it's up to 13 degrees fahrenheit warmer in the moon shade and that's not possible if it's just reflecting the sun's radiation at the very least i'm not saying that it should be warmer in the moonlight but it shouldn't go negative it shouldn't it definitely shouldn't go negative you know double digits and I, we didn't even know this technology existed until we started looking at universities. But now there's, it's in health, some health products, and that's called, known as a cool laser. You can actually cool things down with a laser light by tweaking the frequency. So the question is, why is the moonlight giving off a cold laser light? And that's because in our thing that we say, uh, the moon is self-illuminating. The, the sun is just an incandescent light bulb, and the moon is just a cool LED it's all they are. And, and, we, and we've done tons of tests along those lines. You know, everything from point and click infrared thermometers to copper strips and water. Oh, here's where it gets even weirder. Cause, and I, I will take credit for this one. Because I said, well, if you magnify sunlight, you could burn paper, right? Uh, if you magnify moonlight, what happens? Does it warm up or does it even get colder? It actually gets colder by a few degrees if you magnify moonlight which goes along the line of the cool laser light theory. Now, does that prove a flat earth, that moonlight thing? Or does it even hint at really flat earth? Eh, no, but it completely destroys the relationship between the sun and the moon. Just just kills it. And it's like, it's like, nope, the moon isn't reflecting anything off anything. The last one, fifth point that I gave them was the, uh, the Van Allen radiation belt trap question, which goes mm -hmm. something like this. Are the Van Allen radiation belts deadly? Yes or no? Uh, for those listeners that don't know what the Van Allen radiation belts are, they were announced in 1958 by Van Allen, a NASA employee that said, oh yeah, there's these really horrible bands of radiation that surround the world that no one should ever go through them ever, 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 because you will die. And that's a problem. And so I go, okay, so again, are they deadly? Yes or no? If you say yes, they are deadly. Go with Van Allen on this one. Then uh, how did the Americans get through them, what, six times, round trips, with no shielding whatsoever? The only things that can stop radiation are lead, gold, and a whole bunch of water. Uh, and the Americans mm -hmm. only use aluminum and plastic. And they went round trips, right? They, you know, hours and hours inside these belts. And they, nobody died, nobody got radiation poisoning, nobody even got cancer. There's still five of these guys limping around today. How'd that happen? If you say no, you go the other way. You say, well, no, they aren't deadly. I go, okay, fine. Go to the nasa.gov website. There's a wonderful video that they made back at the end of 2014 called Orion Trial by Fire because they were talking about how they were going to test the capsules for the Mars program, otherwise known as Orion. Never going to happen. And <laughs> they said, we can't, we can't test the capsules because we haven't solved the radiation problem yet from the Van Allen belts. Like, what, what? What are you talking about? You solved it perfectly. You solved it in the 60s with analog technology and, and aluminum and plastic. How, 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 how can you even make this statement? And they never retracted from it. They, they, to this day, they have not te tested any capitals. They just keep kicking the can down the road. Anyway, those five questions I threw at this Georgetown physicist, and that was it. He folded. He just said, that's it. We're not, we're not doing this. And ZF1 went home angry. And I was like, okay fine and i've got the zf1 uh in my interview i think on on my channel somewhere in my interview list so people say you didn't talk to them i go absolutely they called me i didn't even know who these guys were i don't know german television so there you go and and to this day i i put that question out to people and most people can address one maybe two but they can't get all five which is kind of like the how the clues got so there you go 
So you just, uh, in your last point, you mentioned the Van Allen belts and the radiation yeah. and, and in the same sentence, almost, NASA. Now, I, uh, yes, uh, the day before yesterday, I uh, went on the social medias uh, I am connected with. Um, I sent out this question. Uh, I, I told people, okay, I'm going online with the flat earther. Mark Sargent, um, Sargent, I'm sorry, and uh, he is talking about flat earth and, and this theory, this idea. Right. So what do you think? Is it the, the question on the internet was, what do you think? Is it fact? Is it fiction? Or do you have another idea? Right. So there were a lot of people who mailed me and, 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 and uh, over social media. And, uh, well, the, the, the thoughts were a little bit divided. Uh, some say, okay, it's a plain, simple BS. And <laughs> others say, okay, I don't know. It could be true, but I, I don't know. And some say, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a full supporter of Flat Earth. So there was somebody, and that is uh, Tony Damien. And he is a shaman. And he, uh, I spoke with him a, a bit about this idea, about this theory. Um, um, to boil down his uh, of our conversation, uh, he mentioned a stat in his uh, message to think that all space travel, NASA, ISS, SpaceX, and satellites are somehow smoke and mirrors from Hollywood and not real. That is quite a claim, he said. Yep. For what purpose? That, this is his question. For what purpose would a hoax this large? have been set up and what does it prove? Got it. Uh, no, it's a, and it's a great question. And I put a photo in the chat room or in the chat box for you on this and we could discuss it in a minute. Uh, it's just a random photo from Apollo 12, which I can just destroy all day long. Uh, but the why, why hide it? Uh, why keep this thing of smoke and mirrors? Why keep this thing from the public? The biggest reason is lack of control. By the time they figured it out for themselves, you remember, I don't care who, what group you're talking about, the Illuminati, the Bilderbergs, the Rothschilds, the Trilaterals, the Council of Foreign Relations, the Masons, the Vatican, doesn't really matter. Wow. Who, you, whoever you, everyone's got, it's like, who runs the world? Take your pick. Um, <laughs> it's, it, uh, cause it could be any of them. Nobody, that's the, the beauty of it. Nobody knows uh, for sure. Um, but if they didn't figure this thing out until 1960, <laughs> then civilization the problem was is the civilization was already built the cement had already been hardened society had already been laid out the infrastructure had already been laid out the last thing you want to do is tell people oh yeah by the way the world that you think you were living on it's not really it and here's why i'll give you it's a three-pronged thing uh it's probably the shortest illuminati meeting ever which is like should we tell them right um academically think about every university in every country right astrophysics and astronomy pff, those burn down you have to rebuild those from the ground up um, every remaining science biology hydrology archaeology geology anything with anology next to it uh, those have to be retooled entirely i mean libraries have to be burned <laughs> yeah they, it's, it's not just revision i know that sounds terrible but it, I mean, I, you, I, don't, it, I, I don't see that as a pleasant side. No, it's not. And no, and, and exactly. Well, okay. And that's just the academic and not not in a bad way. It's not like, you know, it's it's just something that has to be redone. It's like, oh, man, we have to redo our textbooks. That's just the academic side of it. Economically, you'd have to shut down world markets for months just to figure out what it means. I mean, the, the markets are so hypersensitive about everything nowadays. It's like, oh, yeah, by the way, the world's not a globe. You know what that would do? The shockwaves that would, that would cause? But the big one would be the, um, the religious side of things, the spiritual side. You're talking about the five major religious houses of this world. Um, Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. You're all telling, you're telling them all five simultaneously. Oh, yeah, by the way, science has been beating you over the head with textbooks for the last half a millennia yeah you got something on them now that it would start a firestorm because they wouldn't let up they, they wouldn't stop with flat earth they'd be okay so we need to revisit some things like i don't know evolution carbon dating the big bang dark matter just, just going on it would never end i mean between those three things is potential chaos utter chaos and so when people and i disagree with the conspiracy world and the because people say oh no you should tell them the people have a right to know it's like 
Eh, not in 1960 they didn't. Nope, 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 nope. I mean, the United States almost freaked out with the whole Roswell thing. And that was in the 40s, you know, 1947, where, you know, the newspapers were all over. We found a flying saucer. People were freaking out. And so they retracted it. It's like, no, 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 no. We're not telling anybody about it. It's like, oh, it's a weather balloon. Oh, good save. Anyway, um, but here, but as far as the NASA thing here, I'll, I'll, the, the picture that I sent you, like a great example yes. of it. Uh, that's just one shot. There are tons and tons of shots. Let me break it down really fast. People say, oh, no, you couldn't, you couldn't, NASA couldn't fake it. It's like, come on. Even, even here in America, we've been skeptical of the moon missions for a long time. And outside of America, I don't know why you guys believe anything that we do. We, Americans, we lie and make up huge things about everything. And in this case, it was a beauty. Uh, real fast. Ready? Okay. Um, this is straight up physics. Uh, one light source, the sun, 93, we'll just call it 90, 90 million miles away. All the shadows are going in one direction. Well, not here. <laughs> They're not. They're going at least four directions. Why? Because the light source is really close. Probably 30 yards behind the guy that was taking the picture. Uh, footprints everywhere. Footprints, you know, in the soft ash. There's footprints all over that picture. It's a high def thing. Zoom in on it, right? Footprints everywhere. What's missing? Oh, how about the blast crater from underneath that giant 10,000 pounds of thrust engine that's underneath that thing? Not a, not, nothing out of place. There should be a huge splay pattern underneath it. It was like it was just set there, which it was. I won't get into the stars too much because there's people that photographers have told me. It's like, no, no, it's an exposure setting. You don't have to have stars. I'm going, nobody decided to change the exposure settings for one roll of film ever in any of those missions and take them it's like and and then the astronauts come back oh no we, we never even saw stars okay well now you're conflicting because you've got photographers saying you could see stars if you had the right exposure settings but apparently the astronauts could never see them whatever i don't care the big thing for me is engineering that satellite dish right there that's a vhf transmitter from 1969 that thing is hooked up to a car battery right at on a good day you can look this up this is not secret super secret technology right that thing has a range of maybe 50 miles on a good day and that's morse code and this thing was pumping out 10 frames of color video a second and perfect two-way communication with no distortion and no breakups whatsoever no no through the van allen radiation belts over a quarter million miles how are they even lining it up they had analog technology the spacesuits should have turned into balloons it's a soft suit in a vacuum in a vacuum environment how how did that happen uh it's just, everything's wrong it's a but because this picture was in life magazine and all the major magazines people thought it was absolutely true i mean the the if you zoom in on that capsule it looks like it was made by a homeless person is with curtain ah. rods and, and and aluminum foil it's horrible this and that's just one image there are tons and tons and tons of stuff I could show you on this. No, NASA never went to the moon. The Americans never went to the moon. It is an absolute sham. But the, but the reason why they faked it is because they had to fake it. Because the last thing you would ever want to do is let the private sector get involved and and have. Remember, NASA is the NASA is a collection of parts uh, from military contractors. You know, they get their parts from Lockheed Martin and Boeing and General Dynamics and all these guys. Well, the last thing you want is like get Boeing team up with like a major, you know, contributor like, uh, hang on. I think something, I think there's a cat at the door, but a major contributor and, um, uh, and then go to the moon. It's like, oh, we're going to put a Doritos logo on the moon. You'd never, ever want to let that happen. Give me five seconds. <laughs> anyway, so they had, they had to fake the moon mission. Absolutely had to fake it. Um, it, it was, it was a, it was a necessary evil for lack of a better term. Sorry. There's my rant. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I thought that there was a cat again. <laughs> so, um, Mark, what you are saying, it, it sounds like um, like a conspiracy. I'm listening. Go ahead. Keep going. <laughs> um, now, the, 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 the flat earth theory is called a theory. But do you consider it as being a theory, what you are all mentioning and what you're all pointing out? Or do you consider this as a theorem? I consider it about, because people say, you know, how sure are you? You know, how, how sure are you that the world is not what we think it is? 99%. Uh, 
going on 100. I can't say 100% about anything. I can't even say 100% that I even exist as a self-aware being, honestly. But uh, th for this 99%, only because everything just kept piling up as we were as we were getting going along the road with this. I mean, my, the, after I made the clues, because my clues were really just a cry for help. It was like, look, I'm a pretty clever guy, pretty creative problem solver. But the internet hive mind is very, very intelligent. They miss nothing. So tell me where I went wrong. You know, I put all these videos on the internet and with my contact information, my phone number and my email address, my physical address. It's like, tell me where I went wrong. And I had so many people contacting me all immediately from all walks of life, with the exception of aerospace, of course. Um, but all branches of the military and air traffic controllers and pilots and engineers. And they all kept saying the same thing. It's like, wow this may not be that crazy let me tell you why and they just kept adding to it and adding to it and adding to it and then it just started snowballing so no i'm i'm completely on board with this and the, i'll give you the other another power of why this thing's so strong and why is you know i've been doing this for five years now is because we have a we have a 99 percent retention rate which is almost impossible i mean that that blows away even major religions you know people that get into flat earth they don't leave flat earth and the reason is, is because everybody hates it going in, including me. Flat Earth is terrible. It's a piece of garbage. Never, ever want to look at it. And everyone goes in and trying to disprove it. They try to debunk it. They try to prove the globe in a court of law. I did too. I did for months, worked on this thing. And the problem is, is that you tear down the globe yourself. We don't tell you how to tear it down. You do it. It's like, hey, go, go nuts. Go, go crazy. And when they're done, if you break it down yourself, and then you lose enthusiasm in the flat earth enthusiasm you know it's like well i don't want to make videos anymore or whatever how can you go back to the globe because you were the one that broke into a million pieces anyway you know you can't you can't reassemble it and so again i have yet to find somebody you know a diehard flat earther on online that is was was flat earth and it's like nope i'm i'm with the globe now never happened that help so what is it is it is it a theory or is it a theorem? Define theorem. A theorem is a statement that has been proven on the basis of previous, uh, previously established statements in mathematics. Um, a theory is the com contemplative yeah. and rational type of abstract or generalize generalizing thinking or the results got it got things. it no we'll no we'll, we'll definitely heavy leaning theorem. leaning towards theorem because we've done a whole bunch of experiments in this which is what everyone would want to do anyway i mean nobody the, the flat earth is so ridiculous that nobody wants to go along with it be, you know unless they're sure and so people started coming up with their own, you know, my clues had no experiments in them whatsoever. I didn't even hint. And the first thing people did was starting doing long distance photography, then laser tests, then light tests, then moonlight tests, then high altitude balloons, and then all the other stuff we started observing. Um, so no, definitely theorem. So you say you have done experiments. Yep. I have watched a couple of videos uh, uh, which you are also featured in. Um, <clears throat> among others, an experiment with a laser beam. Yeah. And I don't know if that worked out already, if the, if the results uh, you want to have uh, came in. Um, but it seemed that uh, a little, little tiny laser pointer yeah. was uh, spreading its own light on an uh, extremely long distance. Yep. So I was thinking, but I'm probably, I, I'm, I'm not a flat earther, so I haven't um, dove into this uh, theorem yeah. uh, as deep as that you have. So, but I was thinking, um, if the sun we are seeing, which you are stating also in, in, in your uh, many, many, many videos, yeah. uh, that it is an artificial light, right. but it is that freaking immense big, that would mean that the start of this light, of the sun, yeah. is immensely tiny. If I have to think about the experiment that, that has been done yeah. with the laser at night. So what is the sun? This little tiny. Yeah, tiny no, it's thing? it's tiny by comparison. It's, it's not. Tiny. 
Yeah, yeah. It's um, and this goes along with the sticks and shadows argument, which science will throw at us. Uh, you know, they the sun relatively is gives off the same light and shadows if it's really close and really small rather than really huge and really far away. So the sun isn't 400,000. Uh, I'm not going to do kilometers. Uh, well, sorry, American. The uh, not 400,000 miles wide or whatever is in kilometers uh, wide and 93 million miles away. It's less than 50 miles wide and maybe a few thousand miles up. We're not we're not completely sure. But then, yeah, it's so it's it's tiny by comparison. It's very, very small, but that makes sense. And it's one of those bad things. I feel bad when we when you look at flat Earth models when to do perspective, the sun and the moon are huge on the models because that's it, the only way you could even see them on the on the models, the, even the illustrations, is to make them at least a thousand miles wide. And people's like, well, if the sun was that wide, it'd be daylight all over the place simultaneously. It's like, yeah, it's not that wide. It's like, why do you draw it that wide? Because you have to see it. It's just representation. But no, the sun is tiny by comparison. It's uh, oh. as wide as, well. The connection was gone again. The connection was gone for a couple of seconds. Uh -oh. So, uh oh, what was I saying? What I have missed. Uh, anyway, the sun, um, the sun is very, very small uh, and, and very, very close. How's that? Short version. And that, oh, and that is why it doesn't, it doesn't light up everything at the same time. It is, uh, it is very, it's, it's like a little spotlight between, between the fact that it's very, very small and the atmosphere has a thickness to it, meaning when it goes off in the distance, you think it's setting. It's not setting. It's just fading away into the thickness of the atmosphere. No different than when you see um, uh, images underwater, like a whale going off and it's only 200 feet away and it just starts fading away and fading away. And it's like, well, the, the, what you, why did the whale fade away? It's because you can't see through the water. Even a bright summer day, divers will tell you this, a bright summer day, you go 200 feet down, the sun's gone at 200 feet down. Why? Well, because it, the sun can't penetrate through that much water. It's, it's the, remember what we're breathing in right now is only a thin version of that. It's just a thin version of water. How's that? That help? That sounds very, very crazy. That is something that I cannot agree with because that would mean if that is a, a thin, pigmy like water, that means that I'm a fish. Yeah, it's pretty much. When, when, yeah, when, what? Well, I mean, uh, that, that is, that is, is beyond my. I mean, what I can accept. I'm no, no, no. Sure. I mean, Sorry, it's, Mark. it's, you don't have, I mean, no, I mean, you're not aquatic by definition, but you are, again, yeah, remember that, again, it's nitrogen and oxygen. It's, it's, it's the thin version of soup. Even what we're talking through right now is only 99% transparent. You know, we think it's completely transparent. People forget, remember our visual spectrum, we can only see so much. Our, the human, human eyes can only see so much, but yeah, you're swimming. Basically, when you're walking through things, that's why like the speed of sound was such a big deal because you were pushing through that air and the air has a thickness to it. Um, also, when I mean, when propellers, but when a plane is flying through the air, what do you think the propellers are pushing off of? They're pushing off of the atmosphere. If there was no atmosphere, which is why when an airplane gets up so high, it stalls out because there's nothing to push against, which leads into our other thing, which is like, okay. Um, your feet push off the ground when you're swimming, your, your hands are pushing off the water and propellers and everything push off the air. What do rockets push off against when they're supposedly in space? Nothing. Supposedly nothing. They, they that, and that go again, goes straight against physics for every action. There must be an equal and opposite reaction. If there's nothing to push off of, you got nowhere to go. There's, there's nothing you can do to generate momentum. And anyway, so there you go. So you mentioned in in uh, uh, a couple of minutes ago yeah. in your five points gravity. Now in middle school and then in high school we have learned that free fall can be modeled by an invisible force and that invisible force is gravity. What allows us to predict the movement of objects, yeah. stating that they are attracted to each other in a particular. Uh, to massive objects like the Earth. Right. Now, it was in 1915 that Albert Einstein uh, proposed a, a rigorous mathematical model which made it possible to describe this freefall more accurately. Yep. 
According to Einstein's theory of general relativity, massive objects like the sun on Europe wrap the space-time around them. And the effect on these objects is what we call gravity. So locally, space-time is curved around every object with mass providing other objects to follow its lines and create an effect of landing and falling. Yeah. The mass of the Earth is, according to science, 5.9 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. Right. What creates the effect I just explained. Yeah. Now, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but if a flat Earth, like a disk, yeah has the same mass in order to generate its own effects in gravity. Right. It then should look like a cylinder instead of a disc. Unless this disc is beyond a corporation huge. Good point. Is the disc well, there's different different ways we could go into this. Uh, let's correct something first. Uh, the mass of the Earth calculated absolutely makes no sci no sense. Science absolutely has no idea what is underneath our feet right now. Um, we've ever we've all seen the cutaway drawings of the of the Earth, right? You know those wonderful, perfectly thousand mile bands of of red and orange and yellow and white going all the way to that white center. Um, supposedly, if you dig down straight down, you get to the core of the Earth in four thousand miles. Wow, how do you know that? Exactly. Well, because well, what? Um, what's the deepest hole ever drilled? Half that? 2,000 miles? 1,000 miles? 110? No, the deepest hole ever drilled is 12 kilometers. And it was done, actually, by the Germans and the Russians. And they tried for years to get past the 12-kilometer barrier. Could never do it. The bits just fell apart for whatever reason. They thought it was heat, but they also thought it might be something else. And they, they could not get past it. So how is science telling us exactly what the core of the Earth looks like? It's one of those things I throw I throw it against science. I go, you can't. Science makes leaps of faith almost worse than religion in some cases. And not only that, not only will they tell you what the core of the Earth looks like. Remember, this is going to the whole mass thing. Well, they'll, they'll tell you what the the core of Neptune and Saturn and Jupiter. It's like, how can you even begin to start with those things if you can't even drill down past twelve kilometers? How how can you do that? As far as what the flat disk is made out of and how thick and how the density works, well, then we're getting into the whole physics engine thing. Remember, if, if, if gravity for us, again, is almost identical to the globe in terms of how it works, then we're just talking about a physics engine. Meaning, again, if this place is artificial, remember it was built by someone, then as far as what you use for electromagnetic waves and the gravitational force, you can set it to whatever you want. It doesn't have to be this big tube and it doesn't have to be super, super thick. You can make the mass whatever you want. We've been doing it in, in software for years now. It's literally called a physics engine. We can make a hammer weigh two pounds. We could make it weigh a ton. It's just a dial that we set. And by the way, I do, I do believe in, in, in uh, I don't know what your beliefs are on this, that it's not just flat. If it's, if it's flat and it's enclosed, by the way, a pressurized system, uh, you know, that there's a there's a ceiling to this thing, then it's probably virtual. It's probably digital at this stage. I mean, the double slit experiment screams that. Neurosciences versus free will screams that. It, mainstream science knows full well as they're getting into quantum physics that this place is not as solid as we think. So you say um, a flat Earth can generate its own Right. Sure. Why wouldn't it? I mean, it's it's completely oh. it's completely fabricated from second one. If everything is artificial, everything is artificial. Everything from the oceans to the ceiling to all the animal and plant life to the magma systems, then why wouldn't why wouldn't electromagnetic, you know, be artificial? Why not? Well, I have learned that gravity um, is, um, well, space-time, curved space-time, and objects, well, in, 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 in a speed, in a momentum, and it is making a, a mere, more like a curved um, sure. a, um, journey. So it's not being pulled, but it's, well, falling through that it's being thrown right. on that it is being directed 
by the fabrics of the universe and 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 that is um an explanation for what gravity is but if um disc um has a disc creating its own gravity should have a tremendous mass and in the moment that it is where did i have it i thought it was about uh, um 100 miles uh, something that um from that moment on um it is not possible to be flat anymore it collapse to a ball Say, instantly. says says who in a natural says way. who science so uh, you... physics yes yeah the, again if this is what it is if we're just talking about this little thing right here this is it yeah, i see the whole the the whole encompass encompass thing well then what universe would there be and again i'm not trying to be offensive in any way shape or form or, or try to insult science but science is when they're looking at the sky and they're looking at the planets and stars and everything else they're just basically trying to define an elaborate clock system that predates language that's all they're trying to do you know we the, the stars what four closest stars supposedly what four light years away no one's ever going there we're not even going to mars because there's nothing to go to it, you're just talking about, and again, it's a wonderful thing to spur on the imagination, and it's a wonderful thing to keep the institution of science going, but there's just no, there's, there's nothing behind it. I mean, you can, you can use math all day long and try to see if it'll save you, and no offense against Einstein. You know, it's like, fine, if light masses can bend other things, you know, as far as the, his experiment, you know, space-time and curving and bending light, fine, but that's up there. You know, it's something you're never going to be able. Gravity cannot be replicated down here. Never, never has happened. Never will. We until we create some electromagnetic field, a unified field, we're not going to really know that much when it comes to gravity. And I think that's also. Be I'm thinking like this. I'm thinking like, if flat Earth, a disc, is rotating. Um, it's not rotating. Well, you have. Not, it is not rotating. It's not moving. Then how is it going? create its own gravity it, it needs a, a certain kind of rotation artificially built on rotation. It, it's completely artificial no different than uh when people ask me does the moon yeah, but, but this, this artificial thing yes this is created by an an, an inwards pull i i believe it was um, and that means that there, there, you need to have a rotation. No, Without you rotation, don't. You don't need. No who, who says you need a rotation? Who says you need mass? Well, Science? They're, 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 mass. they're, they're working backwards through the. All the things around me have mass, yeah. and some things do not have a quite the same mass, but they do have a form of density. Without this density. Uh, there is no uh, uh, electrons bouncing on uh, off of it, uh, which means that I cannot see it, etc. So we need a certain kind of density. We need the rotation. Without rotation, there is no life. You are, you will feel a complete different something that that it's no, you are not being pulled into the universe or or, or shoot into the universe. That is silly. But yes, you will feel it differently. Um, Everything Cent rotates. Centrifugal, Everything cent rotates. centrifugal, local physics works fine. I'm not questioning local physics at all. Yes, things have mass. Lead is heavier than iron and gold is heavier than lead and so on and so on. Centrifugal force exists. If you have a merry-go-round, I don't know if you call them merry-go-rounds. If, you, if you're on the outside, you're holding on for dear life. If you're standing in the middle, nothing's happening at all. You're just turning in a circle. Why? That's how centrifugal force works. All right, that works great on a local level, but on a planetary level, on a giant spherical level, it makes no sense at all. Centrifugal force, for example, works, I mean, all things, you know, when it comes to momentum, water, great example, absolutely gets affected instantly. If you're holding a glass of something in your car and you make a left turn, you better watch that glass because the, whatever that water is in there is going to move. So if that's the case, then why are our oceans perfectly uniform across the entire world? Meaning if we're spinning at, again, I'm gonna use miles per hour, a thousand miles per hour at the equator, but we're spinning at zero miles an hour up at the North Pole, why are there still oceans at the North Pole and the South Pole? 
it should be like Saturn, where the water, we should have this massive spare tire around the equator. There should be this huge bulge of water, hundreds of miles high. And that's not the case. There shouldn't be any water at the north or south poles if centrifugal force is working. People are, it's like, say, oh, well, the earth is moving so slow. I go, yeah, but it's still a thousand miles an hour. Centrifugal force is a, is a real thing, but the earth doesn't, you know, doesn't react the same way as it does locally. You know, you can spin a, you know, there's wonderful slow motion things of any sphere with, with water and you spin it really fast. The water just flies off it. Oceans don't seem to react at all. But if you say that there uh, is a wall of ice um, on, on, on the edge that is then probably the reason why it doesn't fall off, right? Or is it more like, like this, that as soon as that there is a spin right. in the middle, like you said, yeah. yes, there is, a, well, perfectly everything is normal, as we know. Um, but the more that you get to the edges, yeah. who, the, the more that gravity, uh, when it's a flat thing, yeah. and the more that gravity is getting heavier and heavier, you uh, like you are walking up to a mountain going steeper, steeper, steeper. Yeah, which is, um, <clears throat> which is why it is. So, and that is then, uh, but th th that is. That is, I'm sorry to say so, but it sounds truly silly because, of course it like does. I said, when it has a mass equal to what we know from the Earth. And you, you, I already said uh, you can't is, prove the Earth's mass is, anyway, but go ahead. It is more than 100, more, more than, uh, 100 miles in diameter. Then it collapses into a ball. So it is not possible that it will stay in this shape disc shape you're you, yeah I, I i i would agree with you however you're missing one big thing which is you're you're saying you know the the that system that i was t showing you well you know i'm not going to put up the model again because it's an audio thing anyway but what we're saying is there is no universe to sit in Meaning, yeah, you're absolutely right. Things would might possibly shrink in a, into a ball if we were using the, the standard mainstream science universe. But we're talking about a model <clears throat> that's sitting in an unknown place. It could be sitting on a desk. It could be sitting in a laboratory. We don't know. But there's no universe around it. That's one of the most common misconceptions. The movie Thor did us no favors whatsoever. It's not Asgard. Where you have cosmic waterfalls flying off the edge and you've got this rock that's sitting in the middle, this flat rock sitting in the middle of space. No, we're saying that it's a flat enclosed system that's in an unknown place. It's, it could be anywhere, but there's no depth. What we absolutely know is there's no universe around it. So you're saying there is no universe nope. as we have been taught. Nope. Have you ever been in space, Mark? <laughs> have you? No, but that was not the question. That was my have question. Have you ever been? Because you are stating, you are saying, and you are um, uh, teaching the world and, yeah. and, be, uh, and convinced that the Earth is flat instead if, of... Okay, have straight. I been in space? No. And that picture I just showed you, they haven't been to space either. So the big question is, why are they faking it? I mean, that picture is so unbelievably fake on so many levels. That, so the big question is, why would the Americans fake space? In fact, out of all the people that have been to space, I think only three of them haven't been military. And all, in fact, the United States, for example, all our space guys are all Air Force and they are all high ranking, I think, colonel level or higher. I don't know what the equivalent is over on your side. Colonel or higher. We even had lieutenant generals go up. Why? Why don't civilians go up ever? It's because they sign a non-disclosure agreement when the, you know, the, the rules are different for soldiers. I got a discussion with one of our astronauts, Terry Verts, on a, um, a London TV show. And they were saying, are you calling our, you know, this American astronaut a liar? I go, no, I'm calling him a soldier. I go, he's meant to follow orders. Their rules are different. When they break the rules, they don't go to court. They go, it's called treason. The penalties are way, way worse. And you don't get to be a colonel without learning how to keep secrets. I don't have to go to space, but I'd love to go to space. I've challenged people, go send me to space. I'd happy, be happy to do it, but it's never going to happen because they're going to put the waiver in front of me and they're saying, oh yeah, by the way, you will say exactly what we say and, or that's it. And be like, nope, can't agree. Why didn't they send Neil deGrasse say... Tyson to space? Why didn't they send Brian Cox or Michio Kaku? Why haven't they sent any civilian scientists of any credibility to space? They can't. 
because they know it would, what it would do to them. I mean, the Apollo astronauts became recluses after they supposedly came back. They all, you know, drank heavily and didn't talk to the press, were really cryptic about stuff. And then they figured out, all right, we can't tell these people why. We're just going to tell them that they're faking it. But go ahead. Have I, have <laughs> I been to space? No, I know I haven't been to space, but from our point of view, neither has anybody else. In fact, if, I'll, if I'll give you, you one more. I'll give you one more, real you quick. Seen it yourself. The first, for, for instance, when I, I, I let's say I am uh, I am eleven years old and I have a, a book from the library, which you have been have been burning right into the first couple of minutes. Well, of yeah, this not podcast. not yet, but yeah. <laughs> so. I'm lucky that there was a safe one, but I, I'm seeing that there are a couple of pictures of, um, well, an, an Antarctic and, and, and polar bears and, and, and penguins and sea lions, etc. and a lot of ice, yeah. but I've never been there. This is what you are doing. I'm sorry to say so, but this is what you are doing. You are picking out those pictures, making up uh, your mind in there yeah. and, and, and create an idea. And, and a theory, but you have never seen it with your own eyes, that's, that's... In, including including the, the edge, including the globe you are saying, uh, the dome that uh, should be there, yeah. which we cannot see. Um, but you haven't seen it. You haven't been there. Why don't you go out there and uh, say, OK, I'm going to walk as far as I can. Can't. Just a minute. Can't. Um, um, as as far as I can, and uh, uh, gather as much um, evidence uh, for um, well backing up all my theories and ideas and and teachings that I'm spreading in the world right. via YouTube, right. your your website, etc. Right. Uh, all right. Where do I open? You had a, quite a few things there. Uh, first thing would be, by the way, I, we, we never said, uh, yes, fine, you, you say that's, oh yeah, I, I can see pictures of polar bears, actually polar bears are, I think, on the North Pole, but it doesn't really matter, uh, penguins and stuff, and, and even though I've never been there, and it's like, okay, that's a little different, because we could go there if we wanted, nobody can go to space, the, we're talking about, what, 500 people out of 8 billion coming up that have ever supposedly even claimed to have been in space, and they're almost all military, fine. As far as going to Antarctica, like finding the edge, as it were, oh, that that's a great idea. And in fact, a lot of people thought of that. It's like, wow, what, we should really do that. And then all of a sudden we realized a treaty was put into place in 1959 called the Antarctic Treaty, the only unbroken treaty in the history of our treaty system ever, which says that no corporation, no nation can set up shop there, do anything until basically the end of time which was really weird considering it was 1959 it's not even up for review until 2041 and i think that's even been pushed out until almost 2050 and not only that but even if you want to go do some exploring since nobody owns antarctica which is completely ridiculous you top, find me a piece of real estate on this world that's not owned by anyone and you say it's environmental it's like no no greenpeace wasn't even found until the 1970s In 1959 they said oh environmental no no not buying it but the treaty says that you can't even go exploring out there without going through a massive process of different permits and huge amounts of money. And you have to appeal to multiple countries simultaneously. Uh, tell, me, tell me why Antarctica is off limits, basically. No corporation? You're telling me that we, the United States went down there in the, in the early 1950s. It's on television. It's, it's, just, it's such a great thing. That our, one of our admirals, he said, the whole place is made out of coal. There's uranium. There's minerals. There's oil and gas. This place is going to be fought over for years. And then he goes down for the very next mission. And he comes out of that thing. And all of a sudden, the Antarctic Treaty is put into place. It's like, yeah, nobody can go down there ever, ever, ever. Lock it down. It's like, what are you talking about? What conspiracy is bigger than money? Find me a conspiracy out there that's bigger than mine. There's only a couple that I can think of. One is the shape of the world. The other is the existence of God or some, some beings that are way beyond ours. And they locked it down. The only people that can go. Now, you want to go to Antarctica tomorrow? Um, I, I won't do the, the German equivalent, but I think it costs 15000 American to go down there. And yeah, you can have your picture taken with some penguins on the coastline. You want to go into the interior on your own with your own plane? <laughs> no. Not a chance. People that try don't get very far. They get fined and the military turns them away. 
No one will talk about it. So, and by the way, wh what? It, here's the th one of my big red flags, not to drag this out. One of my big red flags for Antarctica was, not only are you not allowed to go down there as, as a corporation, let's say you're the head of British Petroleum, and you want to, you want, it's like, wow, there's oil and gas down there. Not only are you not allowed to go down there, you're not allowed to talk about it. Find me an argument where, where like what? You can't go to the London Times every month and run a full page ad. It'd be, it'd be really great for us to go on Antarctica. No, no one's even allowed to. Oh, every country that signs on and every economic power had to sign this treaty. No one's even allowed to argue the point. Don't give, don't give me this environmental stuff. That's not it. There's no indigenous plant life. The penguins are only on the coastline. There's no ruins. The place is just miles and miles and miles and miles and miles of ice. And by the way, it's also the most unusual continent in the world. A lot of people don't know this, is that right after you get off the coastline, which is like 200 feet up of ice, it's not like Game of Thrones, but once you get up, it, it starts plateauing up at about 14,000 feet. The whole thing is, is way above altitude sickness level of ice. It's it just screams go away. Anyway, sorry. There you go. The, perhaps it is more uh, boring than thinking in, in ideas or theories that uh, there is, a, well, if to say so, conspiracy theory that, uh, um, that, that there is a, a border behind it, that there is a wall. Perhaps people um, or governments don't want us in, 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 in large groups to go to the Antarct Antarctic uh, because when you mix uh, salt and sweet water together, you get a, a form of electricity on a natural base. And also the streams and the hot and warm streams in the water in the ocean uh, is for animals a path to go to. And, uh, and even, even a border in, 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 in the oceans. So we need this kind of electricity uh, to maintain everything uh, in the water and etc. cetera. Sure. So when everybody is, a trampling um, the ice uh, with their uh, well uh, dirty shoes and 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 cigarette smokes and etc. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, again, we don't. Let, let, I'll use. I'll use. Why don't, you, why don't you fall for a change? Why? And I, I would love to come back to you on that one. And I definitely. Uh, in that moment, I want you to have uh, back in, in one of my podcasts okay. um, right into the moment that you are saying, okay, I leave my YouTube channels and websites for, for a while there as they are. There are enough people that can maintain that, that they, they can answer uh, emails, etc., etc. Yeah. And you are personally going on a ship into the Antarctic trying to find that edge. Proof what you are saying again the treaty the treaty won't allow it i mean i could send you a pdf of it it's out there it's easy to find but i've got it on my machine you can't you can't do it even if you were a billionaire which is part of the system how it works and you would have a lot to lose if you're a billionaire that got into a big jumbo jet with a whole bunch of fuel it's like yeah let's ignore gps let's just go right well, first off, you get a call from whatever nation security and they'd say, sorry, national security, you really, really shouldn't go there. And if you try, we're going to seize all your assets. But even if you made it out there, here's a perfect example. If you made it out there, let's say you did find the edge. Remember, our United States military was looking for it for 30 years. It took us 30 years to figure out where this thing was. Um, who are you going to tell when you get back? What are you going to do? You, you're gonna, you, think, you think you're going to be able to release that to the public? So one of the it's the best kept secret ever. You're not gonna who, not not gonna be able to tell anybody. The mainstream media? What what group would you go to? I I dare find find me a country that that you the mainstream media isn't compromised. Objective journalism is gone. You wouldn't be able to, would yeah you might be able to post something on YouTube. I don't think it lasts very long. But no, the the treaty's bulletproof. Bulletproof. You can't go on your own. I, again, you can go down there, but going into the, the interior by the time you created because it's not just a ship. Remember, the, the, the Antarctic coastline is just the beginning. We're talking about thousands of miles inland. I mean, they were the United States Navy was flying their planes for 30 years with refueling, just going over and over and over and over. And then finally, during Operation Deep Freeze, 55, 56, that's when they found it. Of course, they didn't release it, but that's when everything started locking down. You know, they went from, oh, yeah, everyone's going to be, he said on television, he goes, he goes oh, yeah, we're going to have tons of countries down there for the next 100 years. And then right after he gets from, back from Operation Deep Freeze, it's like, yeah, everyone needs to get off of here. 
as fast as you can. It's like, what would you find? Like frost giants? What would you find down there? Anyway. A, a flat earth. Mark what lies beyond, beneath us. What lies beneath us right now? What is beneath the disk? You tell me. The, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, mainstream science can only go down 12 kilometers. We can't, we can't get past that. Uh, you say that people have found uh, something, um, but are not releasing it. So, uh, somewhere, uh, if you want to find something on the net, deep web, etc. Doesn't matter where you're looking, somewhere you can find a trace, somewhere. What lays beneath us? Where? It impen uh, uh, it, because the, it is a what? freaking scary thing to think about that that the movie Man in Black is real in that <laughs> sense. That when I pull pull my finger into that that the watery liquid bottle that I am disturbing a, a potentially, of yeah. I I mean there was a line from one of our presidents back in um, World War Two. When he said, and it's a great line, he goes, only give the public as much truth as they can handle. And that's, you know, that's, pra that's, that's actually a follow up line from Men in Black, too, where he said that people, a person is smart, but people, what he's talking about is the mob. The mob is dumb, panicky and dangerous. And they always have been. So people, you know, again, a person can adjust to something as far as what's down below us. I think it's an impenetrable barrier, no different than the dome above us. I think it's all made out of the same structure. And people say, oh, what is it? It's like, I don't know, high frequency, ultra frequency, heavy metal, heavy water, unified field. I don't know, whatever it is, though, we couldn't break through it with atomic weapons. And we tried for four years. So did the Russians from 58 until the end of 61. Literally every atomic test we did was straight up. Well, or at an angle. They tried to bust through mm. this thing, couldn't couldn't do it. It's like, well, if you can't beat it with megatons, what do you do? You have to wait till other technologies come along. Maybe HARP, they tried, I think, and now probably CERN or at different aspects of CERN. You know, maybe you can skip your way past it or quantum your way out of it. I don't know, but I don't think anyone's going anywhere. Don't you think it's an optical illusion that the Earth being flat? Optical illusion. No. In fact, it's, I, I believe in the opposite, meaning people will say, uh, and again, I've, I've, there's videos out there, that when we look across the water, that even though we see flat at huge distances, or we're up in an airplane and we shoot with um, daytime infrared nanometers and we, we see vast distances, it's an illusion. It's like, yeah, optical effects can only go so far. And then you run into, I mean, because we can see, the thing that really changed the game was HD technology things aren't blurry anymore and now we can see stuff i challenge people it's like show me an object will round up 100 miles away you know across a body of water a lighthouse some building whatever it is find me a static object that you can't see no matter what because you say the curvature there's blocking it there should be objects like that out there i put that challenge out years ago no one can show me anything there's some wonderful um oil rigs off of california Great, great examples, which you can shoot, you know, and you can line them up, one at seven miles, one at 10 miles, and there should be a curvature of the earth that's cutting off the legs of these things. And yet, not only do we not see that, but we can clearly see the horizon behind both these objects. And some people have said, oh, no, that's an illusion. That's, that's a mirage. I'm going, no, there is an optical effect defined that can, can show you this. But 10 years ago, 15 years ago, well, let's call it 10, 10 years ago, we couldn't see it because we just didn't have the tech to see it. Now, I mean, I wasn't even the guy that came up with it. Literally, the, within two weeks after me making the clues, there were people running to the beaches with HD cameras and shooting off. And now we've got wonderful footage. I think um, when I think back to what my math teacher uh, once showed me, he draw a circle on the blackboard and then he took a ruler and lay it uh, around the circle right. and he was pointing out that every uh, uh, the circles are made from very very many uh, little tiny straight lines yes and, so well in computers you're you looking into 
when you are looking over the globe, yeah. uh, regardless where you are standing, it looks flat. It will always look flat. Well, yeah, yeah, you, I'm, I'm glad you said that because you're one of the few people that, that actually can say that. I have talked to tons of people that say they can see the curve you know, side to side and, and even front and back. And they said they see it from airplanes, they see it from balloons, they see it from a mountaintop and seen it from the beach. Well, you know, I've, I've got Neil deGrasse Tyson, the world's most popular astrophysicist, you know, during a presentation he did at some thing where he said, he goes, even at 130,000 feet, you can't see the curvature. So why do I, I talk to thousands and thousands of people that say they can see it and it's straight out of Orwell. It's not that you see it, it's that you want to see it. And there's a big difference in that. You know, they said, oh, I can see the curvature of an airplane all day long. I go, fine, here's my challenge. And I put this out there for years. I said, take a picture of it with your camera, put it on your laptop, hold a straight edge up to it. And if you still see a curvature, you send me that image, I'll, I'll quit, quit Flat Earth tomorrow. No one's ever sent me anything. But at the same time, you know, they haven't, you know, cried to me and said, no, the curvature was there. And to your point, by the way, about the little right, you know, the little angles in the, in the thing, you're absolutely right. I, I have thrown this at people and they get really mad when I tell them, I go, computers don't know how to draw circles. And they go, what do you mean? I go, I go, pixels are square. I go, computers literally don't know how to draw circles, not because we don't want them to. We don't know how to tell them how to do it. And so I'm kind of curious if, you know, if you took a, if somebody that drew, you know, hand drew a rough circle, you know, a person, and if you zoomed in on it close enough, I wonder if you would still run into those right angles. That'd be I think so. Yes. Maybe. Maybe it would. Doesn't that so. kind of kind of? Well, from that point of view, from that point of view, um, those who say the Earth is flat, you are correct. But also from that same point of view, yeah. those who say that the Earth is a sphere are also correct. Because a circle is made out of. Millions the, and millions is it of is it possible? Parts. I've heard this theory for years. Is it possible that we are? Well, it's not a theory. Of course, my math teacher did draw it on the blackboard. Ah, so because he drew it on the blackboard, it was absolutely true. Uh, yes, because he was laying the ruler against it, huh. and I can uh, do that over and over and over again, and I come up with all little straight lines so doesn't doesn't that, that view, doesn't that kind of lead right. doesn't that hint though that we are living in potentially um a virtual reality if we're drawing no, no. if we're drawing the same things I, that our computers draw if you I, I don't see a relation there also not with computers when i have a basketball and or a tennis ball or something i can do the same and it's a 3d object well, that's what I'm. I'm I, that's what I mean, though. I, and it's one of those things that in in my community they don't necessarily like me talking about it, but I do anyway. It's like, look, if it is flat, because all simulations that are built on a flat world, all video games are built on flat. Even though, even if they say it's a curve, it's still flat because programmers are lazy. So if if we if everything that we create virtually is using little right angles, and you're saying that we ourselves are drawing right angles. Could it be that, you know, that we are also, you know, that this world is only, you know, a construct? I still don't see it. I'm sorry. I'm trying to wrap my mind around what you are saying. Okay, okay. So you're saying that when you draw a circle, if you if you draw a circle right now, right, on, on a piece of paper and you zoomed in a, into it with a very strong microscope, would it be right angles? Uh, little lines. Little yes, lines. Straight lines. Well, again, yeah, that is that is a little spooky. It doesn't matter if, if I do that with a 2D circle that I've drawn on uh, on a piece of paper or that I'm taking a, a tennis ball. They When you lay a ruler against it, it will be straight lines. Yeah. So from that point of view, you are right saying that the earth is flat. But from the other side, like, again, like I said, those who are saying that the earth is round, that is a sphere, are also right. Because a sphere is built up from straight lines. It fully depends from which point. Yeah, but you that are. but that wouldn't explain well, again long in the world on which magnitude you are on. Yeah, again, but wouldn't explain any of the five points that I brought up. 
it, fine. It, it, the, just because the, the sphere is made up of right angles wouldn't explain vacuum versus gravity, and it wouldn't explain long-distance photography. I mean, we've had arguments That's where people have said, okay, we're, we're, we're just a flat part on a very, very, very big sphere. And that the Earth is actually, you know, it's we're we're just a landmass we thought was Earth, but then again, it goes into the whole universe is a lie, bit because the whole oh by the way, the photographs of, of the Earth taken from space that's that's one of my big things that I throw out there. First photograph of Earth full disk taken from space, well known. It's the blue marble shot from 1972, taken by Apollo 17. Do you know when the second blue marble shot was taken? 2015. Uh, what happened? Right. 40, 43 years, no one took a full disc shot of the Earth. No space thing ever took a disc shot of the Earth until we started coming along. In 2015, it's like, oh, here's Himawari, here's this. It's like, it's like what happened? All the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000, 2010, no, nobody took a shot of the Earth? No. Nope, nope, nope. Statist statistically impossible. Oh, yeah, by the way, no astro find me an astronaut that's taken a camera and turned around 360 degrees with a camera running. What, why didn't that happen? Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. So... On the moon? Ne never happened? No? Why? No. Nah. No. Nah. I don't know. I'm not an astronaut. I, I mean, I come should, on. Uh, I mean, come on. I, look, I, I, know you, I know you lean science, but come on. That one picture I sent you, again, that's just one shot. Even, I have yet to have anyone even address the shadows. It's like, look, everyone knows. You go outside, shadows, one direction. All the shadows run parallel. Why are the shadows running con? Why are they going to connect to each other in this shot? No one will even touch it. You won't either, but that's fine. I get it. You, get, you, you don't want to deal with it. It's fine. And, and I don't blame you. Look, it took me a long time to get, to get my head around this. It did. They, but it's like, you know, it's too big. It's too big. It can't be a lie. You're talking about a lie that, we're, you know, millions of people would be involved. In. It's like, no, hardly anyone would be involved with it. Nobody in NASA knows this. And you polish a fuel system, you mop the floor, you do accounting or do whatever. Nobody knows. Even I don't think even the astronauts know. I think they know they're faking something. But I don't think they know they're faking this. It's like, just why, why tell the president? Why tell Neil deGrasse Tyson? Very few people would have to know this. And, and don't tell me. It's like, look, the Manhattan Project was kept a secret, even if you were going to that road. The atomic bomb, total secret. Nobody in this country knew anything. And then we blew up Japan. And it's like, oh, hey, we did have those. Can secrets can be kept? Anything else? In plain sight. In, yes, in plain sight. Absolutely, they can be kept. In, well, but not because of a huge amount of effort. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of time and money with all the space programs, but because people uh, they don't see the forest for the trees. They don't. They don't know what they're looking at. I mean, why? I mean, I didn't even. Th I. I'll give you a perfect example. I don't want to drag this out too much which is when I was running a tech support team in the States, I wanted to put different images of the earth, full disk images of the earth on all these different computers. I go, Hey, they're iconic. It's kind of cool. It's sciencey. Let's do that. And this was 2000, 2000. And the internet was, was getting there. Right. And I do start doing bully, no, bully. No, what? <laughs> My dog was uh, uh, walking around and, and throwing a ball. Aww. She wants to play. Okay. Nice. So I was <laughs> I was doing these Boolean searches for Earth from space, you know, different things, and trying every combination I could. And I kept seeing one image and one image only, which was the Apollo 17 blue marble shot. Literally, there was only one picture of the Earth on the internet. Just all uh, just different resolutions and different quality, but it was just the same freaking shot, which showed the bottom part of Africa and all of Antarctica which was a weird coincidence. Why would the only shot of Earth be, you know, show the only continent being Antarctica? It's a whole nother thing. And I remember thinking to myself as I'm looking at the, uh, going, NASA, you suck. I go, you can't put up any more shots of the Earth than this? And I thought it was a fluke. And then later when I watched the documentary, when, when Al Gore was president over here, or vice president, and he was, you know, vice presidents, they're bored. They don't have a lot to do. So he called up NASA because he had a blue marble shot behind his desk in his office. And he calls them up and he goes, hey, can I get a different shot of the Earth from space? You know, so I get some updated shot to put on my wall in my office. They said, sorry, we don't have it. Didn't exist. Even, even Apple, the very first iPhone that came out, mm -hmm. they had to create... 
the blue marble from scratch. They had to hire a NASA guy, a NASA software guy, and they interviewed him later. He was not shy about it. It's like, oh, yeah, use Photoshop, just rendered the hell out of all sorts of things, layered it and put the hot spot and all the different clouds. And he even got lazy. It was That was the part that bugged me. In, in the Southern Hemisphere, he used the clone tool and cloned all these clouds. They were all the same freaking clouds. And and they asked him, it's like, why did you, um, why did you have to manufacture it? It's like, oh, there were none out there. No one thought that was strange. I'm like, okay, fine. But again, that shows you what the public misses, hiding in plain sight. They just don't, they just don't see it because they're not looking for it. So NASA consists from uh, a lot of illustrators and graphic designers. Yes, there are. Well, hell, there's some wonderful documentaries where they will take, supposedly take shots from telescopes, right? You know, they're all these beautifully rendered things. No, no. In fact, it's just dots. And they send them to the illustrators and they're not even shy. They hire some really talented, creative guys. And they say, we're looking for bluish hues or more of a wispy type of thing. And they you know, create them and they'll, they're will not shy about telling. You. It's like, oh yeah, we're, we're, we're extrapolating what they want. And no one thinks it's dishonest at all. It's like, um, which is why, um, do you remember the um, Felix Bumgardner Red Bull jump? from a couple years ago where he, uh, well, that's a great thing. I've got a video on it. I'll send it to you where he, um, Red Bull, the drink, he, you know, they get a guy, take him up to 130,000 feet and he jumps out, right? He it, like the world record of parachute jumps, right? Thing was mm -hmm. when he jumped out, there was this massive curvature of the earth and Neil Tyson comes on, um, uh, on one of his things and he thought it was dishonest. And he was the first thing he said, he goes, he goes, yeah, you can't see the curvature from 130,000 feet. They used a fisheye lens, otherwise known as a peephole lens. You know, when you look out a peephole in a door, your hallway's not curved, but the peephole makes it look like that. And I've talked to producers, media people, and I said, I go, I go, look, the Red Bull jump is completely dishonest. I go, if the curvature was that severe at 100,000 feet, I go, the whole place would be, you know, the whole world would be the size of Germany. And they, uh, and I go, why'd you use it? And they go, well, it's a more dramatic shot. It's a better shot. It looks better. And I go, mm. I go, but it's not honest. It's like, yeah, Mark Twain. Uh, I don't know how much longer you want to go, but Mark Twain had this great quote. He said, uh, never let the truth get in the way of a good story. And what he meant was, and I have learned this through, cause I have dealt with a lot of producers over the last five years doing, doing all this stuff. He, and th th the truth is bent when it comes to media all day long you bend it you hype it because you want viewers you know it's not objective at all because you have sponsors and parent companies and parent companies above them and because and that affects just about every aspect of media you can think of and yes sometimes the news and so if, if the government and nasa wants to do this i mean don't get me wrong i do not think this is a sinister thing that, which makes me different. Why, you know, is NASA lying? Yes. Are other space and things lying? Yes. Is the government tied into it? Yes. Do I think they're doing it for the greater good? Yeah, I do. Uh, you know, the public was not ready in 1960 for this. Um, we were helped over the last, the first three years we were doing this, they could have shut us down. They could have crushed us. Uh, you know, YouTube is owned by Google, which is owned by the Alphabet Group. They could have changed the algorithms. We were recommended on the right-hand side, recommended for you constantly, just constantly, nonstop. There was a programmer in a documentary, I highly recommend it, called um, the, the Social Dilemma, where they're talking to social media guys, programmers that said they basically made this Frankenstein monster and it's really horrible. But there was this one programmer from Europe and he was asked, he, uh, he was asked, you know, why things get recommended? What's the algorithm? What gets recommended for you on the right-hand side? And he, and of all the topics, all the topics he could have picked, right? He picks one and he goes, well, if the average person that starts getting into flat earth watches 20 videos in a row, what do you think we're going to recommend? And mm -hmm. we were helped for nonstop and people will say, oh, oh, it's censorship now. It's like, no, like, you can't call censorship now. They, they were, they were practically, you know, they were our biggest cheerleader for, for three years. So we're being, we're being helped by someone. There's something else going on here. I think part of the government is what's what's happening and why you're talking to me is because it's been released deliberately and there's something else going on is it part of the great reset maybe i don't know maybe flat earth was such an open-minded thing that it made people more palatable to open their up the minds to other things and it's like all right you know we'll have to see where this ends
What, what is the future holding for flat earthers and especially the website? Uh, the, well, not necessarily websites, but the, the internet in general, the biggest thing for us is, is just hitting critical mass, which is, you know, we've done about as many experiments as we can without going to Antarctica or hijacking a billionaire and making him fly his jet, you know, into the wall, um, is hitting critical mass. I'm a big believer of, uh, science, science pr principles, which they back away from. One of my favorites is the hundredth monkey effect. Uh, if, you, if you've never heard of it, it's, it's a fa fantastic thing. It goes into the whole, you know, how everyone's wired together. The Americans were doing experiments on the beach with monkeys after Japan in the World War, and they were giving them potatoes. And, and some of the monkeys were washing the potatoes off, the sand off of them in the water. What was interesting was, and again, science backpedaled from this very, very quickly because what are the implications? Where once they, about the hundredth monkey learned to wash the, the potato off in the water, they all learned it. Ev all the rest of the monkeys learned it simultaneously, including the ones in other islands. The same monkeys, the ones that weren't even connected. So it was kind of like, like all the species of monkeys were updated simultaneously. It's like they got an upgrade. But that science isn't like that one. They said, oh, no, it's a myth. It's, it's absolutely, it's, it's, what are you talking about? You guys did it. And it's like, why, 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 why are you walking away? It's like, well, because it, it's kind of spooky in their eyes and they don't, they don't like that sort of stuff. But I, I'd, I'd sounds, it sounds very creepy. Yeah. That DNA is updating itself. Um, there you go. Uh, over long distances. Yeah. 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 Um, and so do I think that it could apply to humans? Sure. Why not? We're both mammals. I mean, are we a little more advanced? Yeah. But we share some of the same stuff. So why not? Why not? So I do I think I th I'm hoping that one day because I've talked to so many people in the community that just won't come out of the closet because they're scared of, you know, persecution by friends and family and coworkers that uh, they I'm hoping that we get to that tipping point where it's it's actually more comfortable to talk about it than to hide it. And that's that's why I talk to everybody I can and do the public speaking things and keep putting myself out there. Fantastic. <laughs> is the Earth spherical or flat? What is fact and what is fiction? Our knowledge about the outside world might be the same as a crossword puzzle with no answer key. Just the uh, reassurance that the answer we think we know fit together. So there are always uh, is always a possibility that the answer to one clue uh, or all of them um mark i see that we are way past you sorry and uh, <laughs> so i'd like to thank you for uh, uh, talking to you and and about this mind dazzling theorem instead of theory uh, according to your own saying yep. And, but before we close out, uh, can you tell us uh, where we can find more information about uh, perhaps upcoming research that you are doing yeah. and, and experiments, um, uh, conferences yeah. uh, perhaps, uh, or where people can contact you when they have perhaps a million and million of questions? They, they will. Um, the easiest way to find me and everything that we're doing is to go to YouTube. You can type in Flat Earth Mark. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Just flat earth mark and all my contact information, including my physical address, my phone number, my bank account, routing numbers, all these things. No, none of that. But, but all my contact information is absolutely in every description box of every video that I make. I try to make myself as available as possible. You can email me with any questions. You can call me. Uh, don't text my phone. I hate texting because I'm older. And, um, the community at large, you could just go into you that we we live a lot on YouTube, type in flat earth and YouTube and scan through, but if you type in flat earth, Mark, you at least get my stuff. There's great playlists. I've got a, a playlist called flat earth experiments, uh, observations, subject matter experts, people I've talked to over the years. Um, there's so many, so many great videos and there's so many great content providers as far as conferences and everything. Uh, we just did a conference in the United States, uh, the end of October. I don't know when we're going to do a next one soon. We would have had a tons of them. I was over in Europe all, all last year, but because of the whole virus thing, 
Uh, we, we, no, yeah. one's, no one's going anywhere. Uh, but we're hoping to do more soon. And But again, if you have any general questions, reach out to me.